Hi everyone, this is Teresa Green and it's Mindful Monday. You may remember in an earlier video I talked about how this time of year from a Chinese medicine perspective is actually not the best time of year to do resolutions at all. That the best time is to wait until springtime, which in Chinese medicine, the Chinese lunar calendar, starts usually in early to mid-February, The first, when you first start seeing the dandelions kind of shooting up out of the ground. That's when the energy of your side of the planet is actually helping you to grow and helping you to have that energy to want to get out and do things. And that's the time to start really working on implementing a resolution. That time and a little later going up into March. Right now in Chinese medicine is what we call the time of the water element. And the water element deals with the idea of potential and possibility and the unknown and dealing with um, things like both fear <clears throat> and the ability to deal with the unknown because those two things are very closely related. And so in that video I suggested that you just think about what you wanted to do as your New Year's resolution kind of idea. And so I have a little bit of a prop here which I think I have the mirror set up so you can read it. Yes I do. This is a seed catalog. Now you can have whatever seed catalog you like. This is one of my favorites and if you want one they'll give send you one for free at uh, www.rareseeds.com. But seed catalogs, if you are into gardening or even just slightly like I am, I'm not a great gardener, but I like to see little things shooting up out of the dirt, they can be a world of possibility. So you start looking through the cool pictures and you start reading all the uh, different descriptions of the seeds. And before you know it, you've decided that you're gonna have a garden that you would need 80 or 100 acres to be able to come close to managing. Of course, for most people who aren't farmers, that's completely unrealistic. And the same thing happens with their resolutions. A lot of times when you start resolutions, you decide you want to do all the things and become perfect in a year. And so you decide, well, I'm going to exercise and I'm going to eat right and I'm going to start a new business and I'm going to you know, contact all my long lost friends and start having a big better social life and I'm going to dress better and you know, whatever it is your thing is, I'm gonna learn how to cook gourmet meals. Whatever it is that you're interested in that you've always wanted to do, when you start making resolutions, a lot of times you end up getting a whole bunch of them at once. And you get so much encouragement from the people out there in the world. There's boot camps, there's haven't you always wanted to do this, there's you can have it all. And the thing is, you can have whatever you want, but you have to understand there's trade-offs, that we have time, we have a certain amount of money, we have a certain amount of energy, and from the perspective of what we do here at Slow Pass Wellness, self-care is a really big, important part of life. Without self-care, everything else will kind of run off the rails really fast because you'll either be sick, or you'll be depressed, or you'll be anxious, or you'll be tired, or you'll just burn out. And so then all these wonderful things you want to do won't even be interesting anymore. So that's why when we talk about resolutions and trying to decide what you want to do in the wintertime in a China, from a Chinese or Asian medicine perspective, we talk about first thinking about it, but thinking about it in the realm of possibilities and potential. So I'm taking my seed catalog and the first thing I'm doing is I'm just going through it every single page. I'm ooing and aahing at the cool colors. I'm looking at the neat vegetables. I'm thinking how cool it would be to be able to plant these things and to be able to cook them and to be able to serve them to people and have pretty flower arrangements and all the cool things. And this year, unlike a lot of years, I'm just looking at it the first time around. I'm just tasting the possibilities a little bit, but not committing to any of them. I'm just imagining the fun. So the next thing I'm going to do after I do that is go through it again. And this time, take the things that really seem to have a strong desire for. So, you know, maybe I'm not as excited about some of the flowers that aren't edible because I'm an herbalist and I'm a foodie. So things that are edible are more interesting to me. And there's plenty of pretty flowers that are also edible. So that's, that'll be my next round, is to probably weed out the things that are just ornamental, unless they're unbelievably amazing, and just look at the edible things and try to pick the ones of those that really seem to sing to me the most. Then the next run through I'm going to give for it is to pick the things that seem like they might actually be realistic for a gardener with my limited ability and time to work in, because I'm not a master gardener. 
and I don't have a lot of time and I'm still recovering from a uh, cancer treatment in 2020. So I also don't have a lot of energy to, for extra things. But this I think is also an important part of what gives me joy, so I'm including it. And then after that, then I will finally be whittling it down to where I have the maybe four things, maybe five things that I'm going to actually try to grow. And that will be the implementation time. So my plan, the way that the garden works, is I have a little teeny, 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 tiny little greenhouse and I'll be planting some things in my little greenhouse in February. Again, the time that things start to grow anyway. And then around March, the things that are early spring that can take the cold weather, I'll plant those out. And then around the end of April probably is when the other things will go out. And that's how I'll set up my gardening part of my, my resolutions or my plans for the year. So I suggest that you do something similar to that with things in your life. If this year you have 15 different really cool things you want to do, I would winnow that a little bit. I would look at it and I would say, okay, here's 15 things that are really cool that I really like to do, but I'd like to be able to enjoy the process of doing them. So let me look at these 15 things and knock them down a little bit. Which, one, which are the ones that are either the most time sensitive for you? So for instance, if you wanted to make some health goals, and you realize that you have, you've just been diagnosed with prediabetes or even diabetes or with some other health issue or the doctors told you if you don't stop smoking this year then you know cancer is really up there in your in your future and we really don't want that or some other health problem. So time sensitive could be one category for how you decide how you're going to um, make your plans for the year. Things you really enjoy, which ones would do you enjoy more? Do you picture yourself if you were to start a new exercise program that included maybe say hiking or swimming, thinking, you know, I, when I was a kid, I really liked doing that and I think I'll enjoy it when it comes up again. Maybe you'll enjoy that more than really jumping into a strong diet program or vice versa. If you think, you know what, I think I'd really like to learn how to cook vegetables and grains and make sure I get my water up and I'm dealing with all the nice fruits and vegetables and getting that variety because I've been eating, you know, takeout or frozen food or things that are fast to prepare instead of really investing in myself. And I'm just really not excited about sweating. So maybe this year you'll focus more on the diet and just do a very minimum part for the uh, exercise this year with the plan of being changing that. So look at what you want to do. Maybe for your career, there's a part of your career that you really want to go into, but you're not as sure how lucrative it'll be, or you could focus on another part and you have a better chance of making money on it. And that's the choice that you'll, you'll need to choose between the two. Trying to do both will probably mean you don't actually accomplish either one of them. So from a mindfulness perspective, what you can do in a mindfulness world is you can try on how that will feel. Because mindfulness is a large part about what's actually going on in your body right now. So when we do, when we sit and we think about, okay, we're gonna focus our energy on where, on the top of our head or on our, you know, our nose and our sinuses or down on our chest. That's one way of checking in with yourself mindfully and just seeing what's happening in your body and giving your body the chance to sort of express itself without your mind over there overpowering the chatter. Another way to handle mindfulness is to try to give yourself time to sink down and to be really honest with yourself about things. So if you find yourself always getting irritated at a coworker and you can't quite figure out why, mindfulness is being able to sit still and think, okay, what happens to me when I get upset at that coworker? How does it make me feel inside? And you kind of play it out and imagine that feeling. And sometimes you'll think, you know what? That's exactly how I feel when, felt when kids used to pick on me in school. And then you have something you can work with. You can go with a therapist. You can look up different kinds of journaling to deal with that. So there are things you can do with that. So just like that, when it comes time to pick what your goals and resolutions and plans are going to be, you can try those things on the same way that you try on savoring something good or the same way that you try on trying to decide what breaks down in communication with a coworker or a family member. So look at your resolutions and try them on. So for instance, when I'm looking at my seed catalog, I'll look at them and look at the different things I'm like, oh, this is, this thing is so cool. I love this. There's a, a bean in there that they call it a snake bean, that it can grow 30 inches long and an inch and a half wide. And I'm like, wow, that sounds really cool. 
And then, you know, if I look at it, I don't remember what the care instructions were for that one, but for some of them they say, you know, well, it's you have to make sure it stays really well watered, or you have to make sure you prune it back. And actually, that is one of the things for that one. You have to prune it back really hard to make sure that you, it's not dissipating its energy across a bunch of vines, just kind of one or two vines going out. And so as I sit with that and I picture how that feels, the need to really be super attentive taking care of this one plant and kind of just really really putting a lot of attention into it. I'm not sure that's really me. My garden is something I have a passion for, but it's not the primary passion in my life. My connections to my family and my friends, my connection in my work, these things like these videos, the things that I do here, that's more of where I really want to put most of my focus and on the things that I'm doing for myself that are um, fun. Cultivating fun has been something I've really been working on the past few years. So I'll probably end up putting the cool bean aside and looking at the things that are a little bit less intensive work. The ones that say, this plant can handle neglect. That's the one for me because I don't mind neglecting my plants because it takes a lot of work and effort to garden and I'm willing to put a percentage of that in, but not a lot because I'm much less willing to neglect me. So you can do the same thing. So if you have, the, like for instance, the thing we were just talking about with the job, one, one that you're pretty sure will make more money but is less fun, and the one that's more fun, well, try them both on. See how it would feel to have more money in your bank account and maybe have a little more boredom. But depending on what your goals are this year, it may be having a little more money in your bank account may help you with buying a new car or helping, helping your child with school or going out to eat more often or seeing a, more savings for your future. And that may feel so much better that the boredom's well worth it. On the other hand, you may look and see the enthusiasm that you would get from being able to study this thing that really interests you, the kind of social connections and business connections that you may make, being able to talk to people who are thinking about the same thing that you're thinking about, the way that you may be able to uh, change the um, description of your job so that you're spending more of your day doing things that you really enjoy and less of things you just have to kind of grit your teeth and get through. You may feel like, well, that may give me more opportunities that may eventually become more money anyway. And if I'm enjoying my day-to-day -day life more, then all the things, the other, the things that cost money to make my life more enjoyable won't be as necessary. Neither one of those decisions is right or wrong. It's up to what's best for you. So our mindfulness exercise for today will be to try on a situation that you're thinking you might want to invest some time or money or energy into and see how it feels. And that can be as simple as whether or not you're going to make a meal, like a stir fry that takes involves cutting up five different vegetables and making a sauce, or whether you're just going to steam a couple of vegetables and um, roast a piece of meat, something that's less, less intensive, less labor intensive for you. So let's try on just something like that. Just pick up two, <laughs> two, <laughs> two different things, and we'll just try on each one of them for about 10 seconds each. So for me today, I'm going to try on the idea of whether I'm going to do two different kinds of work that I need to get done one way or the other in the next couple of days. I'm going to try on each one of them and see how each one feels. So we're gonna go ahead and just settle in. Sit calmly, let your shoulders sink down. You may wanna kinda of stretch a little bit so that your neck and shoulders feel good. And now sit and just close your eyes. I'll keep mine open because I said I noticed it looks a little weird sitting here with my eyes closed. And just picture the first, we'll call it option A. Think about option A. Picture how it feels in your body if you imagine yourself doing option A. Picture how you feel as you're doing option A. Is it something that you enjoy the process of? Is it something that will take a lot of time? Is it something that you want to take a lot of time? Is it something that you have overestimated how good it will feel in the past or underestimated how good it will feel in the past? What does it feel like as you're doing it? And sit with that for a few moments. And now move on a little further with option A. How does it feel if once you accomplish it or accomplish the part of it? It can be something ongoing where it's not so much a matter of it's finished, like if you want to go on a run every morning. How does it feel as you finish your run? How does that feel? What do you, what do you feel inside with that? So you're getting, seeing what the payoff of accomplishment versus the payoff of process would be. 
and just sit with that for a few minutes. All right, now let's try on option B. So for option B, the same thing. Let's sit and imagine yourself in the process of doing it, how that feels, what it feels like to do the exercises that you would need to do, um, whether that's you know, with cooking food, cutting things up, or with a business thing, making phone calls, whatever the process part of option B is. Sit and think about that for a little bit and just see how it feels, how it feels more in your body than in your mind. And just let yourself sit with option B for a little bit. All right, now let's go a little further on option B. And picture how it feels once you've actually accomplished it or accomplished part of it. And just sit with that for a little bit and see how that feels. Now come, come back to center and let's sit and think for a moment about being able to pick between the two because a lot of times what happens, I know for me at least, and they say people with my personality type on different tests that one of the problems is letting go of the possibilities of one thing in order to commit to another thing. So now if you've chosen, sometimes that'll be a very obvious choice. Once you try something on, you go, Ugh, I really don't like one of those nearly as much as I thought I would. If, you've, if you're at that point, then picture yourself kind of saying goodbye to the other one. Give yourself like a 15 second ritual for burying that one for now. You can, you know, kind of see the person, see the part, see the, the you that's doing the one that you don't want to do there and say, you know what, we're going to wait on this one and we may not do it at all. Thank you so much for your participation and we're going to put you aside. And so the other one gets to be the winner. It got the job. But sometimes giving yourself permission to even if you grieve a little bit, you know, like if, if for me a food choice would be to have, you know, ice cream versus a mango or something like that. I like both of them and I very rarely have ice cream. So part of my brain thinks of ice cream as a special treat. But when I sit and I try on both of them, I realize that even though there's a part of my imagination that sees the ice cream as, wow, this is great, this is wonderful, this is amazing, oh boy, I really want this. When I actually think about eating it, I start feeling myself feel congested. I start feeling my tongue be a little uncomfortable with a cold. Even the richness of it just doesn't, doesn't sit well with me, even though there's part of me that still wants it, and that part I'm perfectly okay with having in my life. The mango, on the other hand, has a lot of the same benefits. It has that nice richness, it has a good mouth feel, it has a wonderful flavor, and I feel my body feels good just imagining eating it. So I'll look at the ice cream Teresa, and I'll say, ice cream Teresa, it was very nice of you to come and play our game today, but we're going to put ice cream Teresa aside. We're going to do mango Teresa today, and we're going to enjoy that. And for that one, thankfully, it's not a huge problem one way or the other, so I don't feel a lot of grief. But there's other things that may have been different, something that I really had hoped for or wanted and decided in the end just really wasn't the right thing for me. Giving myself a little time to feel a little bad about that is okay. So you do that as well. So I'm hoping that today, learning the idea of trying on some of the things that you're thinking you want for resolutions will help you to winnow down, to limit the ones that you do so that you can put your energy into the ones that actually really reflect who you are and what you want. And you can use this for anything. Like I said, something as simple as whether you want the two different foods versus a life plan. And of course, with something that's a big decision, like you know what to major in in college or something like that, you can always course correct. So if you decided that you wanted to major in engineering and decided that, oh, I'm really not an engineer, I'm much more of a you know salesperson or literature professor or something like that, you can always change and vice versa. If you think, you know what, I thought I was this huge creative being that just loved to have no rules and wanted to, you know, wear corduroy jackets with with po with uh, patches on the pockets and I discovered, you know what, I really like nuclear engineering. You can make this, that change as you go. That's the beauty of life is you can make changes. But trying the things on might help. It might give you an idea early so that you can make more decisions that you don't have to rearrange 
and sometimes that's better and sometimes that's not. It'll depend on how your life goes. So practice trying on decisions before you take them, before you make them, and then you can learn a lot about yourself and a lot about how you want to handle your life. So this is Mindful Monday for today. Thank you.